and welcome to the overview of my Pixel Power Calculator. If this is the first time you are seeing this, I hope you find it informative. If you are a previous user, I hope you find these changes useful. The link to the calculator will be in the description below. I originally created and shared this tool with the Holiday Lighting community back in 2018. When it was first released, it was designed to give a general sense where power injection may be needed. I emphasize general sense as the results mathematically may not align with your real world situation. Testing is always advised. Today I'm excited to walk you through a number of enhancements that I recently implemented. I'm also going to walk you through a number of different use cases that can be beneficial to you even if you never plan on power injecting. Before I get started, those, though, for those that are interested in learning about power injection, I also wrote the following article. It walks through many different scenarios as far as it relates to power injection in general. The link is right here at the top. With that, let's get started. So on the calculator, it's broken out into main, two main sections. On the left-hand side here, you have your pixel details, and on the right-hand side here, you have your power injection details. And in this example right now, I just have a string of 100 pixels that are 12 volt, 0.6 watts, 4 inch spacing, and intensity at 100%. On the right-hand side, you can see I'm using 18 gauge wire. The wire length from the controller or receiver board or whatever to the first pixel, to the pixel in question is 15 feet. And then down here it shows my 100 pixels and it shows you the potential load on the wire the, uh, for that particular wire. On the left though it is designed to allow for you to live update. For example I can switch to 5 volts. You'll notice that it automatically updates and shows that now my potential load is 6 amps for those 100 pixels with no power injection. You can also go ahead and say select 30% and it will recalculate automatically for you. And that is true for any of these settings. For the remainder of this, I'm going to go ahead and leave it on 12 volts and I'm going to leave it at 100% for now and we'll change that around later. But now let's take a look at some real use case situations. Say you're in your visualizer um, in X-Lights and you know you have a GE XLS uh, snowflake that's 450 pixels that you really want to run on just one port. So you have the 450 pixels. Now if we go back to the calculator and I go ahead and enter that 450 pixels, it's going to show me that the likelihood of it working without any power injection is very low and that at 100% the load on that wire is going to be 22.5 amps, well over which any of our 18 gauge wire can handle. Now, there's always the question, what if I run it at 30%? In this example here, you can see that it dropped the load down to 6.75 amps, but the likelihood of those pixels behaving properly towards the end of it is very low. Uh, you could always break it out if you realize this and say, you know what, I don't want to power inject, so what if I do 225 pixels per port? At that point, you'll notice that you're under the 5 amps that most of our fuses are rated for and it shows that it's to the end of the line that more than likely you won't have any issues. But now what if you really did want to power inject and you really wanted to plan your display for 100%? So what you could do is say, well, what if I wanted to inject pixels every 100 pixels? So if I started and I said I inv injected at pixel 100, and then I inject at pixel 200, um, 300, 300, 300, somewhere, there we go, 300. And then just lastly at 400, and I'm not going to bother power injecting at the end. Power. So now you'll notice that even at 100%, by adding these power injection lines, all of my lines are within the, the 5 amps. It shows me here how many pixels potentially that exact power injection line is going to be powering all the way down the line. I can always then come back and say I truly am only going to be running at 30%, and the system will automatically update and show you those net calculations. But what if you said, I don't want to power inject that much. I just want to power inject at, say, pixel 375. You can do that also. Click the, I simply clicked on the reset button and then come back down and select 
375, just hypothetically, and add power. And you'll notice now that you know the incoming line is powering potentially 188 pixels, and the power injection line is powering 263, and all the way across the board, I'm in the green. These colors just represent the percentage drop, you know, between, and the, obviously the higher the drop, the less likely the pixels are going to work, which is indicated by the red and the yellow, as I can show you here, the yellow saying that more than likely it's going to work, but at this point in the red, you more than likely are going to have issues. Um, so now what if you had another situation and a scenario where you said, in my layout, I have, I want to power these two snowflakes off of one power supply. Or how about all three of them? We'll go with all three. So that's 1,350 pixels. We all know that that's more than likely, it's going to be, well, actually, I'll just say it, it will be over what that power supply is capable of handling, especially at 100%, you'll notice that that's a potential load of 67.5 amps, whereas our power supplies generally are 30 amp. But if you were taking the consideration of running at 30%, you'll notice it is now at 20.25%. So these are a couple different ways on which you can use the calculator. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask.